Okay, so David comes back and says, Hi, Drew. Hi, Brian. Having enjoyed this pencast whilst sitting in a corner with my head bowed, thinking about what I said yes. about the Lamy 2000. As you should. <laughs> A question sprang to mind. What makes a fountain pen a classic or an icon? Is it the design? Is it how well it sells? Hmm. Is it its functionality? Or is it some mystical other thing? I felt like we needed to listen to David this week since we hmm. kind of, since, since, since I kind of roasted him last week. So um, I actually thought this was a really good question, regardless of my guilt uh, for um, roasting David. But uh, Brian um, added some thoughts here. I did, yeah. So. I, uh, well, as I always do when I want to really make something official, I look it up on Wikipedia and then read the definition. Webster's Dictionary defines it as. <laughs> no, but I thought it was pretty pertinent. I was like, what does classic even mean? I was like, I think I know what classic means, but what does it actually mean kind of in this context? I thought it'd be helpful when kicking it off. So, of course, I look it up on a questionably reliable source, Wikipedia. Um, so, a classic is an outstanding example of a particular style, something of lasting worth or with a timeless quality, of the first or highest quality class or rank, something that exemplifies its class. So, I thought that was helpful in defining what makes a pen classic. Um, you know, it is a word that gets thrown around quite a bit, not just in the pen world, but all over the place. It's a, it's a word I've thrown around a lot when I talk about certain pen designs and, you know, what, you know, certain brands that tend to have a more classic look or classic offering in their color range or something like that. But there really isn't a strict definition of what that is in the pen world. So I thought it was at least helpful to talk about it. I don't know that we're going to actually define it and come to some meaningful conclusions today, but I guess we could and then just declare it and who's going to stop us, right? Because we have two microphones and we're two people jawboning on a podcast talking about pens. Well, I guess if, if I guess it falls to me alone to disagree with everything you're about to say then, doesn't it? I guess it does, doesn't it? Mm. If you can. All right. Well, we'll All see. Right. Um, I'll do my best. Yeah, so what, what pens are classic? That was what was on my mind. I think it's very firmly up for debate, um, especially with 150 year history. I think classic could be something that's interpreted with a varying range of perspective, right? Um, depending on if you're talking about something like video games, right? A classic video game only goes back so far. Fountain pens are much older than video games, right? So something that's classic in video games might be 20 years old. Whereas in fountain pens, 20 years old, that pen is probably still being made as it is today and hasn't now been redesigned. So is it still a classic if it hasn't even been changed? So I think that's up for debate. Um, I don't know what age we should consider something to be classic. I think maybe at least 10 years old. Like it has, if, it's, if a pen's not 10 years old, it's really hard to call it a classic with 150 year history. It could probably even go older than that, quite honestly. 20 years maybe, I don't know. I don't know these things. I'm not a big vintage guy, so I don't really know where the line tends to be drawn there. When does a pen even become vintage? To be honest with you, we talk about vintage pens. Does that mean it's discontinued, not available anymore? Brian, this is the this is the answer part, not the the, the question's already been answered, uh, uh, asked. So we your your job is to now answer. Oh shoot! Well, yeah, we are yeah. we are in Sorry. trouble. This is the Sorry. this is the blind leading the blind, <laughs> right here. Um, I don't really know. I'm I'm. A, I'm I'm, I'm asking rhetorical questions, sort of. I know, I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. So I would say, I would say, if you have thoughts about this, or if you, especially if you are bigger into like the collector vintage world, and you're like, yeah, people that are really into vintage pens, you really don't consider something vintage or classic or whatever until X, Y, Z. There may be some parameters around that that I'm not as familiar with, just being honest. I don't know everything about pens, though I do know a lot of some things. Um, so I think it's uh, the, the comments could definitely help guide us here. Um, I do think, going back to some of David's follow-up questions, I think sales or popularity has to be a factor. I don't think you can just have some radical one-off pen that was designed that nobody bought that was for some trade show or some whatever <laughs> event. You know, like there's other things like the, I'm thinking of the, you know, there's like concept cars, you know, is a concept right. car that's never in production. Is that really something you can call a classic? It needs to be kind of its own category, right? So it's kind of the same thing if you have, you know, an independent pen maker who makes one crazy one-off pen or five pens, you know, in one instance. And is that really a classic? So I, I don't think, I do think that some element of popularity availability has to, to 
be in the debate, um, though it's not the only factor, of course. Um, I think it's got to have something iconic about it that makes it recognizable from other pens or distinguishable from other pens. Something where you can point to that pen and say, that is a distinctive characteristic of that pen. Whether it's, you know, it could be part of the name, it could be the design or when it came out, you know, it could be iconic, it could be a filling mechanism, could be material, it could be a number of different things. But I think it's got to have something distinguishable about it. Um, some element of uniqueness or innovation, um, or maybe even some relevance as like a period of history or as a part of a conversation of a societal era or movement or something like that. I think there's a lot of things that we could consider classic. You know, I'm thinking like specifically of cars, right? Like the 57 Chevy, you know, is classic because of crap. I'm falling off the cliff of what I know about cars, but you know, it's, it's regarded as like one of the best cars. Shoot. I don't know where I am. Drew, help. You <laughs> can't help me out. I'm just gonna, I can't grab onto him as I'm I, was, I just said you should I just said you should talk about the lobby 2000 you 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 decided to go deep I did didn't I why am I doing this <laughs> I don't even know why I'm here okay so really it's something that society has to define so it's always evolving there's no firm definition of what's classic or what's not so um I think we can call something classic doesn't mean that everybody has to like it doesn't mean that it has to be indisputable. In fact, it is impossible to have something indisputable because by its very nature, it is not firmly defined. It's always up for debate. So specifically around the Lamy 2000, I would argue that it is considered a classic for several reasons. One is that it remains today a top selling pen and a highly regarded, highly reviewed pen, though not a favorite for everyone. A lot of the things that people have against it are personal preference reasons or just things that they don't like about it. It's not that it's a poor quality pen or a bad design or anything like that. The pen itself has not changed. It's just a matter of do people like it or not. Um, so, you know, it's been around for over 50 years, has barely changed any in its design since its inception, still looks like a futuristic yet classic pen. It's also just very kind of indicative of like the Bauhaus design. It's tied firmly with the Lamy brand, very recognizable to Lamy as a Lamy pen. Um, and it's gotten numerous awards and recognition for various design and things like that that are not even specific to the pen world. So there has been objective, if you could call design awards objective, there are non-fountain pen people that have called this pen you know, some element of iconic in its design. So I think there are a lot of reasons to consider a Lama 2000 a classic, even if it's not the pen for you. So I think every, probably every pen brand that's around today has something that you could probably consider classic or iconic for that, that brand, whether or not they necessarily designed it to be that way. Because as I was talking about this, as I was thinking about this in my head, I was like, we usually call things flagship, right? Like you have flagship products, or, you know, if you have a, a, a retailer that has a whole bunch of stores, you usually have a flagship store, like Apple has their New York City store, that's their flagship store, whatever. It's usually something that's really big, expensive, showy. It's meant to be the biggest and craziest thing. I don't think that necessarily the flagship pen within a brand is necessarily like the classic or iconic pen for that brand, you know? Would you would you argue, argue that, Drew? Like, I don't, I, yeah, I think that they can be different. Yeah, like I would consider like the Pelican M1000 as being the, you know, flagship pen of theirs, but is the M1000 the classic or iconic pen that they have? I don't know if I I'm... mean, really, they're all just kind of the same at different sizes. Shh. No, they're all very different, Drew. <laughs> I would argue like the M600 maybe is a little more of a classic pen in that sense than the M1000 because they are similarly designed, but it's much more popular. They've done a lot more versions of it and different special editions and things. Um, so anyway, yeah. So I have a list of other pens, but I see that you have a list as well and I've already talked a lot. So I'm gonna- No, 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 no. I think that you, I think our lists are different. Your lists are more historical. My lists are more modern. I did go, I specifically went a little different than you did. Yeah, go for it. With yours. Okay, so some other classic pens, I won't go deep into them, but I, I think Pilot has several, but I think the Falcon, I would consider that to be a classic pen within Pilot because it's been around for a while and it's it's got a unique nib. It's very recognizable. Um, and, uh, you know, within the Pilot line. 
Um, the Mont Blanc 149. That I think is very iconic. People that don't even know pens can usually see that pen and know that it's a Mont Blanc. Um, to that effect, you have other ones that are similarly designed to that in the classic styling, as I've literally said in many videos, uh, pens like the Sailor 1911, right? Kind of similar-ish in style to the Mont Blanc 149, right? Um, the Pelican Souvron series, all of them, as Drew mentioned, is on my list. Uh, the Parker 51, the Parker Duofold, those are both pretty classic within the Parker's line. The Waterman 52, Waterman and Parker both and Schaefer, they've all been around for a very long time. So that you could probably name several pens you would consider classic or iconic from them. The Conklin Crescent, that was a very unique, very iconic pen of its time as well. So I think if you're looking historically, especially for very old pen companies, you're probably talking about pens that maybe aren't even made anymore. Um, but Drew picked some that we actually do still have. So he went a little more of like pens that we have that we might consider classics, right? Yeah, I would say that they're on their way to becoming classic, but I definitely mm. think there are iconic are iconic um, pens. Okay. Just, you know, if you're looking at ones that you could get right now that you could say are iconic for one yeah. reason. Like you mentioned before, I completely mm -hmm. agree. I think that to be iconic, you need to have a standout thing. Yeah. And the Visconti Homo Sapiens, the Bronze mm. Age, the classic one, at the time, it was a lava pen. It had the vacuum filling mechanism was available, but I think that it really popularized it. So you had two elements right there that broke out and became really popular. And even to this day, the Bronze Age Homo sapiens, you know, with that volcanic resin is immensely popular and still mm -hmm. a phenomenal seller. Yeah. Um, the Pilot Vanishing Point, that one is, it, it mm. took a outdated completely unnecessary technology in the fountain pen let's be real we all love it but it's not necessary oh. and then made it actually Blasphemy. practical like so, so you took this you know piece of you know obsolete technology and incorporated new technology into it to actually bring it into the realm of functionality once again so the pilot vanishing point did something very very special and absolutely deserves the iconic denotation if not mm. the classic one um, so I just really love the fact that it kind of resurrected into the uh, practical space once again. The Pilot 823 is a unique one because while there was not a single uh, visible ele visual element to this pen that's immediately set it apart, as time has gone on, this pen has been slowly rising in popularity. And the only thing I can say is that it is a good, well-made pen. And while it doesn't have this completely loud element to it if it is a really high quality pen that writes fantastically eventually it's going to get out there that it is just a darn good pen and people are going to buy it and i think that's what's happening every year that pen becomes more and more popular but gradually more and more popular just because of its own merits mm. it works it's pretty and it's going to serve you well so that one is a really really interesting case um but that one i think that it is basically iconic because of its performance and i really think that that uh, is unique and then i added uh, twisby on here while not one pen you could probably go with the eco or the 580 in this case but if we're looking at the last decade 2010 to 2020 they were revolutionary and iconic in the way that they were able to, around the 2010 era, I think that we all saw a surge in fountain pen popularity uh, because of a new audience, a new level of interest surged into the community. And Twisby was at the forefront of that with their pens, chiefly the 580 probably. But they ushered that in, you know, with the assistance of a lot of interested people in a new demographic and age group that wanted pens like Twisby. And Twisby was there to help these people along in building this interest that we now see is more diverse than ever. So I have to, have, you know, you know, uh, take off my hat to Twisby for being there when the fountain pen industry needed them and continuing to be there. They also are probably the most self-disruptive fountain pen company in the industry consistently challenging their own innovative ideas with new innovative ideas and not being afraid of failure just trying new things in order to stay fresh and interesting and they've they've done it they've succeeded tremendously so um i think those groups um you can still buy pens from all of these mm -hmm. and they're they're well on their way if this trajectory continues they're on their way to becoming, you know, so-called classics or icons, in my opinion. Yeah, classics in the making. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. I think I think icon could be brand new, or it could be super, super old. It transcends. Yeah, I would definitely consider age. these icons. Time yeah. will tell if classic gets there. 
Yeah, well, I'll have to watch this video in 10 or 20 years and see once, yeah, Drew's gone completely bald and I weigh mm. 100 pounds more than I do. I was about to say, I was like, man, look at all my hair. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You can do that now. You can look back at 10-year-old videos and be like, wow. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. No, that's how it goes, right? Circle of life.